Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan, and you're watching Not Spawn Year. It's day 67 of my comic review video day calendar, and I'm doing a trilogy of sorts. Uh, I didn't plan it this way, but this is kind of how it's turned out, of tie-ins to extra media Batman things for Bat March. I'm doing a different Batman title every day through the month of March, and a couple days ago I did a 60s Batman issue. Yesterday I did an issue tying into the Brave and the Bold cartoon show, and today I'm going to do an arc. Arkham comic. This is Batman Arkham Unhinged number 11. This comes out in 2013, just about a year and a half after the video game is released, after Arkham City comes out, uh, maybe closer to two years. This is written by Derek Friedolfs, who I liked a lot. Uh, he was doing some Batman stuff right then, and Miko Suyan, uh, whose art is quite good this issue. I think this book had kind of a rotating artist list. I think there were different artists that came in and out, and it wasn't all Suyan but uh, it's been a while I'm rusty. I might be off about that. So this whole book is based on Arkham City, and I think a lot of it takes place before the game begins. This issue certainly does. Uh, this one is setting up the very beginning of the game where Batman has to go into the courthouse. One of the very first things you do in the story with that game and rescue Catwoman, it is the one big Two-Face thing uh, that happens in the story. I think there might be a side thing with Two-Face as well. I can't remember, but it's the only place where you actually have to deal with Two-Face, even though the game was advertised pretty hard on him, and I think everybody expected him to be a bigger villain, a bigger threat in that game, and he certainly uh, is a lot of fun in that initial uh, chapter, but it's sad that he didn't get more to do, and, uh, you know, after Arkham Asylum, I think everybody was like, hey, uh, when do we get to do something with Two-Face? He's set up at the end of that, but he doesn't really get anything to do in that game, and then, like I said, Arkham City was advertised pretty hard on Two-Face, and then he ends up not being one of the big villains. In a similar way is what happens with Black Mask with Arkham Origins. Uh, but anyway, I remember enjoying this book a lot. I bought every issue of this in print as it came out. This book was digital first, uh, as was the Batman 66 book, and when I tackled that the other day, I was able to find digital scans of the book in the same format that I had it, but I wasn't able to do that with Arkham Unhinged, so that's why you're seeing the kind of half-page format here, uh, why I had to kind of change the layout for the screen. So these would have come out weekly, and you'd get like uh, 12 or 14 uh, short pages at once, and it was kind of a weird, clumsy way to read a comic book, because when you put it all together, uh, and you put kind of the tops and the bottoms together, you get what looks like a real standard uh, comic page. Some digital first books were better at this than others, where it could be kind of awkward getting the tops and bottoms put together, and you could kind of tell what the original format was. This book didn't have that problem at all, I never thought. I don't think I would have even been able to tell that it was digital first in the first place, uh, but I guess the idea was it's, and, and this is before I, or just at the beginning of Comixology's panel-to-panel -panel view, I think. And so the idea, I assume, is, especially if you're just looking at this on a computer monitor or on your phone, and you've only got two, uh, for the most part, panels stacked on top of each other, there's not a lot of varied panel, panel layouts here or anything, and a lot of full-page spreads, if you're just looking at it in digital anyway, they'll look that way. If you're looking at it in the regular, uh, you know, release size for a comic book, uh, this would be, you know, just one panel at the top of another one uh, as well. But it's uh, a little bit easier to look at. Uh, boy, I like the art in this a lot. Uh, it's... It's real gritty, it's real stylized. There's a lot of depth to it, so it's very pencil-y, uh, but all the characters uh, don't look flat. It's got a very three-dimensional look, and I think it reflects the look and atmosphere of the game really well, and I especially like the color work once we get into the... Uh, into the courthouse itself. Uh, if, later on, there's going to be a lot of fire and stuff, and the uh, the color effects are great with the reds and oranges. Uh, but like I said, the details are uh, spot on with the uh, layout 
of the space from the game, and it just captures the the mood and the and, and the ambiance uh, of the sequence from the game, or at least the sequence that that you that you get when you go there. So the setup here is uh, the Joker is going to be put on trial by the villains in Arkham, uh, in, in Arkham City. Uh, I assume most of you guys are familiar with the premise of Arkham City. Uh, a, a portion of the city has been cordoned off after Arkham Asylum has been destroyed, and the thematic idea is that the madness is spreading through Gotham and is more and more taking over uh, to the point where the city itself is beginning to become the asylum. And the question is, how much of this is Batman's fault? Uh, how much of this escalation has he created? If he only left well enough alone, uh, maybe Madness wouldn't... Uh, wouldn't completely envelop the city, or would it be even worse, or would it just be a madness of a different sort? Uh, we we deal with with uh, corruption on top of madness, of course, with uh, Hugo Strange and Mayor Sharp uh, creating this section of Arkham that is kind of a. Uh, Escape from New York sort of situation where inmates are not put in cells. They're just uh, thrown out into the wild with uh, walls up where they can't get into the regular city. And uh, arguably, it's even more inhumane and horrible because of uh, all of the gang wars and how difficult it is to uh, you know survive and uh, get food. And I guess what I always appreciated about Arkham City was that it kind of felt like Batman No Man's Land, the video game, without just straight up doing No Man's Land. It was kind of a mix of two things I really love. Uh, the exploring the asylum in, in Arkham Asylum and also the street level... I, uh, you know, the the villains have taken over the streets, uh, a kind of scenario, and so this comic feels a lot like the Batman animated series Trial, where Batman himself goes on trial, and at the end of this, uh, that sort of kind of happens, but it's all about Joker in the first place. So again, all the villains are blaming Joker for their situation, for destroying Arkham Asylum and uh, getting them put here, and then also just. Everything terrible that's ever happened to them, they find each of them finds some way to spin it and try to make it the Joker's fault. Uh, I wanted to go back and show you this panel again for a second because the man in the clown mask right up front uh, is wearing that famous mask that the Joker has at the beginning of The Dark Knight, which uh, originally comes from a 60s Batman episode. Uh, actually, the first episode that the Joker's in where he's uh, standing on stage uh, at an opera, and he has that mask. Uh, just a quick little factoid in case you're not familiar with that. So, naturally, Two-Face is presiding over the courtroom, and he is the judge, and then we have the split personality of Two-Face and Harvey Dent, so Harvey Dent is playing prosecutor, and Harley Quinn is playing defense for the Joker, and this this is handled about as you would expect. Uh, it's just a lot of clever one-liners and complaints from all these villains going on the stand. It's a show trial. Two Face basically makes it kind of clear at the very beginning that I uh, it's that the Joker is not going to get out of this alive. He it's a sham. He's pretending like it's uh, a you know legitimate trial, but he has no intention, of course, uh, especially because. He's kind of cheating, even though he's playing it like he's two different people in uh, being not judge, jury, and executioner, but at least judge and executioner. And I, uh, he's, I, he, I tells Harley Quinn that I uh, she's not allowed to make any kind of objections through the trial. So it's it's certainly not. I uh, you know legitimate due process, but uh, everybody gets uh, like a moment and fun things to say. Uh, there's a lot of black comedy here, so it's supposed to feel kind of bleak. But like with the video game, uh, as dark as it gets, there's plenty of levity where it doesn't take itself too seriously either. Uh, one of the most fun bits is when uh, Scarecrow who is swearing everyone in, uh, says to Penguin, raise your right hand and swear, and uh, Penguin indeed does swear. He says bollocks. That's pretty great. Uh, 
a lot of the complaints that these villains have have nothing to do whatsoever with their being in Arkham City. It's basically just Joker's a crazy person. He, I, with, with the Penguin, it's, uh, he, I uh, attacked my men with acid and burned them. And uh, each, each person hates him for a different reason, and it gets kind of sillier and sillier as it goes along. Uh, some of them are just kind of critical of the Joker and thinks that I, I, he's he's a loose cannon and I, he's not helpful to anybody, so he should he should get uh, tossed out. And the main thing, of course, is again that he destroyed Arkham Asylum at the end of the first game, and I everyone's blaming Titan for everything that happened. And I oh, and one of the most fun bits is we have an explanation for how villain uh, hideouts get made. There's this girl who is just I uh, just is a hired out contractor who helps villains put together their their themed layers and uh, she says yeah that's what I do I, I take like an abandoned toy factory or whatever and I turn it into a villain layer and Joker planned to blow me up in it now I don't know how she got out of this alive uh, it seems unlikely that she would but there she is she's okay and then Poison Ivy and uh, Bane have the biggest gripes because of the way they're manipulated at the end of Arkham Asylum and Bane just tries to, uh, like, straight up take out the Joker. And then by the end of this, uh, Batman shows up, I guess just because he feels uh, like he can't let anybody die no matter who they are. His life, of course, would be a lot easier if he just didn't uh, intervene at all. But, of course, this isn't justice. And we don't get at all into his motivations or any kind of... Uh, heavy-handed, ham-fisted discussion like you might expect. And some of it is maybe we just don't have enough time in 22 pages to do this. Uh, it ends up being like, you know, 40-something pages with these smaller pages, but, you know, here it's it's 22. Uh, but there's no discussion about how Batman, you know, won't let anyone die or how it would be so much easier if you just let the Joker die. Uh, none of that is here. It's just sort of implied. And by the end, Two-Face, as the judge, says, I, okay, we find you guilty. And, you know, the jury the jury finds him guilty, and he says, I, okay, you're going to be executed. We're going to do that right now. And he immediately puts Joker, or puts Batman with the Joker and says, oh, you're also at fault. And he just kind of, again, show trial, uh, just kind of ropes him in with that. And then the rest of the comic is just a big... See, I love the color work here with with, with the fire and, and the acid and everything. Um, it's, uh, it's wonderfully stylized and memorable. And I... I, one of the reasons I picked this issue is I just remembered how great the, art, the artwork was here. And also because I was one of more Two-Face in this game. I didn't remember this being as good of a standalone as it is, although most of the issue, these issues, if memory serves, kind of are that way. It's something of an anthology book. I, the, the, the stories will sometimes talk to each other, but it's not one big, long story. It's uh, a lot of different adventures that uh, just kind of help build the world and background and stuff with the Arkham City game. And I think I enjoyed this book more than some people do. I know there were some complaints that I, and I forget what exactly, that certain things in this don't feel canonical or like they really could count with that game. Uh, this issue, I don't think has that problem at all. Uh, but you have kind of an unlikely team up with Batman and Joker for a minute because they're in the same situation. And then, of course, uh, you've you've got, uh, well, I was going to say, of course, by the end, uh, Batman and Joker make it out alive because uh, you wouldn't have a video game otherwise. And you you have uh, some other characters going at it like Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn who are at odds because uh, even though they're friends because of what Joker did to Poison Ivy at the end of Arkham Asylum and because Harley Quinn is still taking the Joker's side. Uh, by the end of this I 
I feel like it is a little bit contrived in letting the Joker get away, where playing the game, you wouldn't have expected that Batman and Joker have had any interaction in Arkham City before uh, the first time he finds him. Like, he's looking for him at the beginning of the game, and if, if memory serves, or at least I remember that, that mission kind of right after the part in, it's been a while, the part in the courthouse where he uh, goes up to a room and he thinks the Joker's there and, and he's not. There's an explosion. Uh, and so I never got any sense that any of this might have happened. Uh, it, it kind of works, except it's it, it feels uh, like it, it kind of intri- contrived that Batman doesn't find a way to hang on to the Joker at the end of this. Like, they get split up. And the Joker says, looks like I've got my own runaway jury, see a bats, and he goes one way and Batman shoots off the other way. Batman seems like pretty easily could have just grabbed him, I think, uh, unless, I don't know, it's, it's a little bit difficult to get a sense of relative space in this room, so I'm not really sure where he is in, in comparison to the Joker there. Uh, we could have made that a little bit clearer and then maybe I would have bought it a little better, uh, but then at the end... In setting up uh, Catwoman getting kidnapped, she says, I've seen my fair share of courtrooms uh, because we know the reader is probably familiar with the game and knows that uh, that's kind of an irony and Two-Face is going to kidnap her here in a bit. A lot of uh, kind of over-sexualization and bustiness and stuff with the uh, women in these games uh, at that point. And just before we start really getting away from that kind of stuff in video games and comics, certainly. Uh, but not a lot more to add, really. Uh, this is just kind of a fun romp, and it goes exactly where you would expect it to. But the art is just wonderful, I think. And it is uh, a fun, real quick read. Uh, that's all I've got to say about it. But thanks a lot for watching, folks. And I will be back again tomorrow with another Batman comic. I uh, hope you are enjoying Bat March, and look forward to Friday night where uh, Austin and I are going to be doing a commentary on The Batman. I will see you again real soon. I was Captain Logan. Happy reading.